I can't believe I haven't shown this to you yet. My mother got it for me for Christmas, uh, you know, so I've had it for five months and I keep forgetting it to show it to you. It's, uh, yeah, music is what feelings sound like. It's, it's actually screen printed onto an actual record. Uh, yeah, the best songs of 1970 is supposedly what is on this record. I, I haven't taken it out of its shrink wrap yet, so I don't know if it, if that's actually what's on the record or if it really is a playable record or not, but, uh, but yeah, that was cool. Yeah, it's got the, uh, some, uh, adhesive strips, uh, squares on it so you can hang it up on the wall or whatever, so, but yeah, that was cool. Cool gift. Thanks, Mom. Welcome back to Tom Zip Parade. Coming at you this time with a new album review and a throwback album review, all in one video, courtesy of my Now and Then feature. The subject of today's Now and Then is Dutch jazz pop artist Wouter Hamel, and for now, we'll be talking about his sixth album, Boys Town. Now, let me take you for a minute back to Christmas time of 2013. I had a gift card to spend, uh, so I found a CD on eBay that I was interested in, and so I decided to browse that seller's uh, additional items to see if I could find anything with which to take advantage of a shipping discount. Well, I stumbled upon this Hamel guy and decided to check out his songs on YouTube. Well, with each song I listened to, I liked it more than the last, and finally after the seventh or eighth one, I decided, what the hell, and I ordered all three of the albums he had released up to that point. And to be honest, I can't even rem remember what the CD was that I was after to start with, or if I even ended up ordering it, or just decided to screw that one and just went with Outer Hamill. But anyway, uh, I was delighted to find out that the rest of the albums lived up to the singles that I'd heard, and he's been one of my favorite artists ever since. Now, Wouter Hamill has basically followed the same musical trajectory that uh, British artist Jamie Cullum has. Uh, he started out firmly in the jazz genre, but has gradually taken on elements of pop music, contemporary pop, uh, with each successive album. Uh, the main difference is uh, one-third to one-half of the songs on Jamie Cullum's albums are usually covers, whereas Wouter Hamill performs almost exclusively original songs on his albums. But uh, with this album, though, uh, in terms of genre, he's kind of taken a U-turn, uh, going back toward his jazz origins after the uh, previous two albums had much more contemporary pop elements. Now, my first impression of this album was that it wasn't too different from something that Rufus Wainwright might do. Uh, you know, throwback pop with dolps of uh, cabaret and Baroque and chamber pop mixed in. And at times this album throws way back, uh, not just decades, but sometimes centuries. Uh, honestly, the, the dizzying array of instruments that the band uses on this album, everything from clarinets and recorders to marimbas and glockenspiels to several things I've never heard of and had to look up online. Uh, I mean, honestly, that ensures that this album pretty much never gets boring. Now, the title track sounds like 60s Laurel Canyon pop, kind of like the Mamas and the Papas. Uh, Live It Up has uh, a mellow 70s AM radio sound to it. Uh, there's a song called Everyone But You, which borrows a lot from the Beach Boys, everything from its references to California in the lyrics to the Wurlitzer organ in the background. And then there's that a cappella harmony in the middle of the song that is just absolutely spot on Beach Boys. And there's a song called Drinks On Me that is very rem reminiscent of Memphis Soul, uh, something that it sounds like something that maybe Mark Ronson would have produced. And uh, Mr. Socialite is another track on here, and that one has a shuffling beat that reminds me of surf rock, like uh, like Del Shannon's Runaway. But then there are the influences from further back, like uh, Legendary has a 30s Tin Pan Alley bounce to it, complete with a tuba. And uh, there's a song called Fun and Games, which opens with what sounds like a traditional folk song that someone in Ireland might have played 200 years ago. And then Jordan Sky sounds like something that Bessie Smith might have recorded in the 40s, except for the early 60s jazz interlude in the middle. So yeah, this album is like all over the place in the best possible way. And that could be a, a, a weakness in it uh, with how much variety these songs have. Some listeners who look for a more sonically cohesive album might be disappointed. Uh, but that's never been a deal, break, deal breaker for me, honestly. Uh, it's, it's really hard for me to pick a favorite song off this album because they've all got some different great thing going for them. Uh, a couple that I didn't mention yet, uh, I Won't Let You Get Away, is uh, just a, a, a good contemporary pop song. I mean, it's got, you know, throwback elements like all these other songs do. Uh, but that's just a really good song. And uh, Real Good Place is another one. And that has an Elton John feel to it. 
So honestly, it's just this album has grown on me a lot in just the month that I've owned it, and it has a really good shot at my year-end number one spot. It's it's definitely going to be in the top five, unless three or four other really really great things come along, which I seriously doubt. But that was now, and this is then. Amory, Walter Hamill's fifth album from 2017. His preceding album, 2014's Pompadour, is one of my all-time favorites, uh, which also means it was going to be a tough act to follow. So I was and wasn't looking forward to his follow-up. And after he released the lead-off single, Hey Now, which I absolutely loved, uh, I had to temper my expectations so as not to be disappointed in the rest of it. Now this album didn't win me over quite as quickly and overwhelmingly as Pompadour did, but that's not to say it isn't without its charms, it just took me a little time for me to find them. Now the centerpiece of this album, as far as I'm concerned anyway, is the aforementioned single Hey Now. It's a wonderfully uplifting anthem that still gives me goosebumps even after hearing it two dozen times, 25-30 times. In a way it was his coming out song, uh, although I don't think he was exactly in the closet by the time this, this album came out, uh, but the lyrics don't it feel good to let your color show? It's about time you let the world know. Uh, I just, it's just gorgeous. I mean, every LGBTQ teen should hear that song. It's just fantastic. Uh, it, it's one that I don't think gets nearly enough attention here in the States. Uh, or, and Dr. Hamill, for that matter, is an artist that doesn't get nearly enough attention here. But anyway, back to this album. There's a nice balance between uh, upbeat tracks and slower songs on this album, and the sonic influences vary pretty widely, too. Uh, soul Sold is a catchy, blue-eyed, soul-inspired number, and the opening track Stray Cat has a solid shot of funk in the chorus. Uh, Daggers and Smiles is another song on here. It's, it's kind of bluesy. And then uh, slowing down a little bit on the slower side of things, there's an almost gospel-tinged sway to the song Lucky Day. That's one of my favorites. And Incurable has a bit of an R&B feel to it. Now the title track is this delicate piano-based ballad, and another subdued standout is Keep Watch, which, despite its quiet sound, is another self-empowerment anthem, kind of kind of like Hey Now. Uh, some of the lyrics are, I think I'm sure I'm right. I'm pretty sure I'd die for my God-given, love-driven, forbidden human right. It's pretty timely here in the States, especially. One more track that I absolutely need to mention on this album is Shackled. It's a beautiful a cappella number with gorgeous harmonies between Wouter and his bandmates, and it, it sits in the middle of the album almost as an uh, as an interlude between the first and second halves, and that, that's just gorgeous. I mean, if, as if you couldn't tell by now, I love this album from front to back, just like pretty much all of his other albums. As for which of these two albums I'd recommend, uh, I keep second-guessing myself. It, it really depends on my mood sometimes, really. But uh, at this moment, I'd probably have to go with Boys Town, uh, just because the musical influences reach so much further back and it, you know so much more broadly, and the variety of instruments used just keeps it interesting from beginning to end. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think I could do without any of his six albums in my discography. He's just a great artist that uh, is very much overlooked beyond. Uh, his native Netherlands and Southeast Asia. He's he's pretty big in Japan and uh, uh, Korea and Singapore and you know that area. But uh, yeah, I think the rest of the world needs to pay more attention to this guy. So yeah, Wouter Hamill is a fantastic artist, one of my favorite artists right now. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at Wouter Hamill then and now. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.